Ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests, uh, good morning and welcome to today's Veterans Day ceremony. We certainly thank you for attending. I'm honored to be the Portsmouth Mayor's Military Affairs Committee. I'm chairman. Uh, my name is Irv Lindley. I'm a Colonel of the United States Army, HUA, and uh, don't hold that against me now. Uh, so, but I'm honored to be your master of ceremonies for this important occasion. We are going to begin our ceremony. If you will please rise and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, which will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be followed by the National Anthem by the Tidewater Concert Band. You may be seated. Once again, it's my honor to welcome to you the Honorable Shannon E. Glover, uh, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, who will proceed with the laying of the memorial, memorial wreath by representatives of the Portsmouth Police, Fire, and Sheriff's Department. Mayor Glover. Now, uh, Mayor Glover will introduce our guest speaker. Mayor Glover. Thank you, thank you, Irv Lindley, U.S. Army, retire. 
I have to remind Irv that this is a Coast Guard city and a Navy city, but I will never let him not think that we don't love our Army. So thank you, sir, for your service. This is a joyous and wonderful day. I am honored and humbled by the opportunity to stand before you this morning at the 11th hour on the 11th day in the 11th month. Veterans Day is a day in which we celebrate our veterans. But before I get into my comments, I want to recognize some of our leaders in the city. We have our fire chief with us, Fire Chief Mangabat. We have our chief of police, Chief Prince. We have our sheriff, Sheriff Michael Moore. And we also have one of my former colleagues who I have a great deal of respect for, who I believe previously was the liaison to military affairs, um, Councilwoman Elizabeth Sinis. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the city of Portsmouth's annual Veterans Day ceremony. Today, we honor those men and women who made the ultimate, who made the ultimate sacrifice in protecting our country's freedom. We thank them, their families, and those who serve in modern times. And I'm gonna digress and back away for a minute to thank the CEO of our Coast Guard base here for being with us, Captain Dewey. Thank you, sir. As written in our program guide, we will now have the ceremonial laying of the wreath in which you saw and America the Beautiful in which you heard. I wanna thank the Tidewater Concert Band for their continued service to our community and thank those veterans who are on the Tidewater Concert Band for their service. Our speaker for the occasion, Vice Admiral Stephen D. Poulin, serves as the Atlantic Area Commander for the U.S. Coast Guard. Vice Admiral Poulin assumed his duties in June of 2020. I think that was during the pandemic. So thank you for your service. In his capacity, he serves as the Operational Commander for the Coast Guard missions from the Marky Mountains to the Arabia Gulf, encompassing five Coast Guard districts and 40 states. That's a big job, sir. Please welcome to the stage, Vice Admiral Steve Poulin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, and thank you. Thank you, Mary Glover, for your introduction and for the opportunity to be here today to honor our veterans. Before I get into my remarks, I just, I wanna join the mayor in thanking the color guard and thanking the band, uh, thanking the present those who presented the wreath. Um, they really set the tone for today. So I'm gonna ask you to give them another round of applause. Well done, everybody. <laughs> Portsmouth is an incredible community that brings military history and military service to life. We only have to look around us here at the waterfront to see this community and its world-class tradesmen and world-class craftsmen, what they do to protect and defend our nation. I also wanna thank the Military Affairs Committee for their support of our men and women in uniform. I really feel deeply privileged to be part of this ceremony to recognize the military service of all Americans who raised their hand and took that oath to protect and defend our Constitution. I also want to recognize and thank all those who enable us to do what we feel called to do. I want to share with you a paragraph from this year's proclamation that President Biden issued on Veterans Day because I think it captures the essence of why we're here. And the paragraph is this. On Veterans Day, we honor our nation's veterans who have given so much to protect our freedoms and the freedoms of others around the globe. They represent the highest ideals of our country. 
For we can never fully repay the debt that we owe these heroes. We will honor their service and provide them the care and support that they deserve. We also salute and show gratitude for all who ensure our armed forces remain strong, united, and unmatched. The city of Portsmouth has been a strong supporter of the Coast Guard and all veterans. Designated a Coast Guard city in November of 2009, Portsmouth is home to one of our largest bases and numerous Coast Guard women and men. Within the Portsmouth area, I have multiple Coast Guard cutters that deploy around the globe to preserve American interests and defend our way of life. The support this city provides to our service members and our families has a direct impact on our ability to deliver, deliver mission excellence anytime and anywhere. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard, I thank the city of Portsmouth for your commitment and your support for our Coast Guard and for our veterans, as well as for the robust support that you provide to all of those who have served. Thank you, Portsmouth. We are proud to call this area home with many of our service members and veterans contributing not only to the front lines, but through volunteer efforts within this community to help Portsmouth become and remain the great place that it is today. And as I stand here, I do reflect on the thousands of Coast Guard women and men who are staying the watch around the world to ensure America's freedom, security, and prosperity. These are women and men who volunteered to serve, who are at sea and on distant shores remaining vigilant in defense of our national interest. They are in the Arabian Gulf. They are patrolling the Caribbean Sea and the Eastern Pacific. They are in the Arctic and they are in the Western Pacific. They serve where called. I'm proud of them and I'm proud to represent them. I'm proud of their families who have had to endure the hardships of separation and long deployments as their loved ones go into harm's way. We owe our military families so much. To our military families, I want you to know that we honor and celebrate you as well. Thank you for your service. What is Veterans Day? If you watch the television, you would think it's about great deals on cars and mattresses. But we know, we know deeply that it's more than that. Veterans Day is the time for us to pay our respects to those who have served in America's armed forces. For this day, we stand united in showing our gratitude and honoring all, all veterans, including the 18 million veterans that live among us today. Whether you are currently serving or have served, the dedication, selflessness, and sacrifice you've shown, shown in service to our nation inspires us all. However, I not only, not only view this as a day to thank those who have served, but also a day for us to reflect on ways to be of service in the future. Now, prior to 1954, Veterans Day was known as Armistice Day. It's the day that Germany signed the Armistice Agreement that ended World War I. At the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, the death and destruction of the Great War ended. A war that took the lives of 9 million soldiers and wounded an additional 21 million. Our citizens were called to action. Our citizens served and they were from all walks of life. They were called together to defend our common good. In 1954, President Eisenhower officially changed Armistice Day to Veterans Day creating a holiday to honor all those, not just those of World War I, but all who have served in our nation's armed forces. At the conclusion of World War I, around 5% of Americans actively served in the military during that conflict. During World War II, 9% of Americans served. Comparing that to today, less than 1% of Americans serve in our armed forces. Military service is something that relatively few of this new generation have experienced. Military service is a calling that puts interest in others above the interest of oneself. A veteran is one who took a stand for shared values, raised their hands, as I mentioned, and swore that oath to protect and defend our Constitution. And all of you veterans in the audience today, and I see many, 
I remind you that the oath you took had no expiration date. While you may no longer be in uniform, we as veterans must continue to live out the oath in our daily lives, just as many of you, I'm sure, do each and every day. So today, as we thank those who served, I think it's a time for us to renew our commitment to public service. Among us here today and in the Portsmouth area, we have veterans that continue to honor their oath and work on a daily basis to help others. We have with us friends from our local veterans organizations that volunteer with local youth in the community. We have veterans that transition from one uniform to another, serving as first responders to aid those in the greatest times of need, those who are in uniform serving our police and our sheriffs. We have those who have moved from military service to public service, leading our communities towards shared growth. On countless occasions, we have veterans in our community who quietly work without recognition to continue being of service to others. We have those that have moved from the ranks of the military to political leadership to serve our communities. Mayor Glover, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Whether you continue to serve as a youth sports coach as a police officer or an EMT, a sheriff, a fireman, or even simply as helping an elderly neighbor take out the trash, the service mindset you build through military service continues to show as a veteran. Whether you serve others through volunteering, serve others in your current career, or serve wherever you see an opportunity to help your fellow Americans, I thank you for your continued commitment to ensure the common good. A veteran's mindset is a team mindset. It's ingrained from the first days of basic training. I'm always in awe when I watch our new recruits go through our basic training facility up in Cape May, New Jersey. We take individuals from diverse backgrounds. We instill in them our core values and we watch them evolve into a single unit that works towards a common good. Whether you were an officer or an enlisted service member, I'm sure you can recall vividly your first few weeks in the military. And I hope you look back in similar awe to how those formative days changed you. We learn early on that no military operation is successful if it relies on a single person. A collective approach is needed to win the battle. This same mindset applies to our communities and families. We need to help ensure that we work together beyond any perceived differences to find areas of common ground and ways to build each other up. As a tribute to all 41 million Americans who have worn a military uniform since our nation's founding, I ask that you honor them by reflecting on your military oath and what it means for our past and our future. Consider becoming more involved in your local communities right here in Portsmouth, or find new ways to live out your commitment to your fellow Americans. To those veterans with us here today, you will know the hardships of military service and have walked the path of transitioning from a uniform back to being a civilian. Whether you serve for two years or 40 years, this move back to civilian status is an eventual part of all military careers. And it can be a difficult one for today's generation of service members. I thank those of you that aid them in making that transition. If you have friends or family in the military that will be moving on to new career opportunities, mentor them as they make this move and help guide them towards a way to continue to serve others. Lead by example. Show them how as a veteran they can continue to contribute in ways just as meaningful as during their time in uniform. I want to close with a quote from President Reagan that is profound and I think perfectly encapsulates this day. He said, veterans know better than anyone else the price of freedom. They have suffered the scars of war. We can offer them no better tribute than to protect what they have won for us. I thank you for your time. I wish you a happy Veterans Day. Thank you to all veterans and your families and for your service and your sacrifice. Thank you once again, Admiral Pullen and I just want to take a moment for everyone to pause and, and look at what we have around us. You can close your eyes if you'd like. 
But I want you in pausing to remember all of those veterans who have served and sacrificed right here in Portsmouth and in our region and in our state. You may have a loved one who has served, but just take a moment and then we'll re begin the program, if you will. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Clover, and certainly thank you, uh, Vice Admiral Woolen. We appreciate your your time and talking to us today on this uh, moment. Uh, we are going to conclude our ceremony by playing the Armed Forces uh, Medley, which is done by the Tidewater Community Concert. And uh, so I'm asking you in the audience, as they play your your uh, medley of your song, please stand. And uh, from there, take it away.
Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, we uh, thank you so much for attending. And this concludes our program for today. Have a great day. It's great to be in America. Thank you.